In this episode, I'll provide an update on what I've been doing within Splinterlands. Have I taken money out? Have I put money in? If so, what have I put money into or taken out of? Hmm. Stick around and find out. Hey all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. Well, it's been quite a while since I uh, provided an account update and on a weekly basis I get people asking me what I'm doing um, and things of that nature, especially on our live stream on Saturday at 1130 Eastern if you want to stop by. Um, with that said, um, I haven't backed out of Splinterlands. Um, I went hard and heavy into land late last year and this year, um, early in the year, actually I've been kind of improving my play deck a little bit of a time, at a time with specific purchases. Haven't thrown a lot of money into it, but I have been um, improving my stake in the game, uh, as it were, a little bit at a time in my usual fashion. Okay. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I don't go whole hog on anything, and if nothing else, I'm kind of spread. There's so many things you can spend your money on within Splinterlands right now that I'm kind of evened out. I'm maybe a little bit heavy into land, but let's go ahead and talk about it. I think the first thing we need to talk about is where we sit or what I've seen out of the new uh, ranked battle changes because I've had several people ask me about that. And all I can say is uh, repeat what the team had said um, as far as what... Um, what the overall goal of the new uh, battles are okay so yes at this point in time we're still within a time period where uh, you may be facing some some people that are way over leveled from you um, they haven't worked their way out of your rank because evidently they have har cards a lot higher than you or vice versa you may be finding somebody that you're a little bit under leveled and you uh, really like smash them because you have much higher level cards, you just haven't had the time to move your account up. And it's generally should be, you know, cross our fingers, it should be moving in the right direction. In other words, as time goes along within the next week or two, we should get to the point where you see fewer and fewer and fewer of those mismatches, if you were. Now with me, I'm sitting in gold one, and this is usually where I would be. Uh, because I have not really made any vast improvements. I bought a few things, um, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, but I've not made any vast improvements, like went out and just maxed out my summoners or something like that. Um, my feelings on that is if you max out your summoners, you have to go ahead and be ready to go ahead and bring all the rest of your cards up at the same time. So I'm sticking where I'm at. I've got level six rare summoners and my legendary summoners are level three. I feel pretty good. I just wanted things to even out and to see where I was going to be sitting. With that said, I've been seeing, you know, most of my matches have been with like leveled people as far as summoners and cards and things of that nature. Now, maybe one out of 10, I end up hitting a max level person that is probably should be high level diamond or champ, but is still playing down in gold for some reason, and they haven't moved their way up. And I, I like I said, I think that should even itself out over time, and we should see less and less of that. Now, with now, that with said, that, uh, Archmage does play my account in wild, and it has been since the changeover. And I've noticed since the ranked battle update, um, Archmage just isn't doing as well, considering it's facing pretty similar decks to what I saw before. Once in a while, the one-offs of the really strong decks, uh, taking those out of, it's just not quite playing as well as, as it has. But I have noticed that what I'm earning per match has gone up a little bit, which really goes against what we've all been talking about. We know that if you play in modern, you're going to make a lot more than what you play in wild. But at this point, I don't know what's happened, but I can tell you that I'm making a little bit more per win than I was before the ranked battle changes. Okay, It's not anything to write home about, but it is sufficiently higher than what it was. I'm talking about uh, the difference of uh, 0.5 SPS to like 0.8 or 9 SPS. That's the difference I'm talking. So not quite double, but I'm sure there's many different things that could impact that. Uh, I just felt that was worth mentioning. Now, with that said, uh, I mentioned that I have made some uh, some purchases. 
Um, we we are in a situation where cards are starting to go up. We're kind of at the knock on wood, uh, beginning of a bull market, uh, Bitcoin's up, everything's starting to look up. We can just cross our fingers and hold our breath at this point, right? But cards are going up uh, for a number of reasons. I think we've there's been several things that have happened within the last several months which have combined to press the prices of cards, um, especially gold foils, up um, for several different reasons, right? Land, staking, couple different staking, buying some of the newer cards for the battle wagons, things of that nature, um, are pressing the cards up. We're hopefully, uh, we're going to start getting more people aboard. We've been saying that for years, but, but this they're year they're putting an effort straight into revamping and making the game more player friendly, uh, if you will. So we can just hope that with an influx of people, then the cards will keep going up. Will they be at uh, where we were during the other bull, the last bull market? Who knows? But I'll take anything I can get. With that said, uh, what have I bought lately? Well, the first thing I will tell you that I have done is let's go ahead and sort by summoners because if you, if you know me by now, I like to start with my summoners. Now, the first thing I did was when uh, the the first airdrop rage dropped. Um, the second series of airdrops have started, so are counting down to the second airdrop. Um, if you've listened to me, you know what my uh, what my strategy is on the rebellion conflicts, and that is a very reserved strategy because I've always been of the mindset that. If I want to buy the airdrop card, I will buy it thereafter, and I'm not going to sink thousands of dollars into trying to get an airdrop. That's just me. Take it for what you will. Um, I feel that my money is better used elsewhere. However, with that said, on the first airdrop, I did get one, and I went ahead and bought another one. I, I bought enough to make a level two. In hindsight, I should have went ahead and made it level three while prices were down because prices are up on it. It's a very good card. I like Rage. And I'm just starting to learn how to use him right now. My point here is that my strategy has really been to buy summoners from Rebellion that I need uh, for my deck to strengthen my deck. So uh, I had I'm at three summoners now, and I'm buying at level six, playing for gold. So and we're looking at rares. So I bought my third summoner. Of course, I have my rage staked. Uh, you can see I'm very reserved on my wagons. They're drawn uh, 10 and a half, uh, 10,660 per hour. Um, you know, this far in, I've got 27 chances. I'm not really worried about it. When I get get around to uh, picking up my fourth summoner, I'll put it on the put it on the wagon, and it'll go. Um, and I'm not, uh, you know, jumping in and buying 100 wagons and, and staking all the cards. You can see I don't have hardly any Rebellion cards. I haven't. Uh, I bought 50 packs. They're staked on the wagon, too. I haven't opened any Rebellion packs at this point. So I'm very weak on Rebellion packs. But um, I'm following my strategy to buy summoners um, and then follow with other cards as I feel the need for them. Okay. So that's the first purchase I made was, uh, let's go back to... Assets, go to summoners. Uh, I have Nomos. Let's go ahead and just uh, sort by Rebellion. I have this three at this point. These are the cheapest three. Of course, uh, they kind of shift around a little bit. Um, and I've been learning to use them as well. So they're pretty uh, interesting to play. Um, okay. So the next thing I will say uh, that I went ahead and took advantage of is, guess what? Another summoner. And it is a legendary dragon summoner. And if you said Lily Shieldpaw, you would be correct. I had been wanting a Lily for quite a while. And I just, for some reason, I just kept putting her off, putting her off, putting her off. And, you know, you, you get in your mind, you, you go to spend 50 or $60. And you're like, do I really need that? Could I put that money somewhere else? Um, this time around, this is about a week and a half, two weeks ago. I was watching Dwayne, uh, a video on his, and he was showing some stats as far as the cards that he was using or the summoners um, that he was using and Lily Shieldpaw had a very high win rate and was used quite a lot. So I went ahead and with, went with that. I do want an Immortalis and it was a hard judgment call. I went with Lily. It was a little bit cheaper than the Immortalis, um, but I'm looking for an Immortalis as we go forward. When I get it, I don't know, but um, that was another purchase that I had made lately. 
Now, uh, jumping over to land, because you know that I like my land. Uh, I have been doing the standard uh, uh, harvesting my land on a daily basis. I've been doing it, you know, once a day, maybe once every other day if I forget. Um, I will say that since they changed the math equation, uh, this happened earlier this year, I think at the end of January, where they noted that the math was not showing right as far as your grain that you were producing. Um, and then they fixed the math. Um, before that, I had averaged out my plots in both my regions so that I was, I was getting a little bit more than what I needed in grain. And I had everything averaged out as far as research and SPS, and I was doing well. Now, one thing I will note is that everything's still going pretty good, but one of my regions, I'm drawing in just slightly less grain than what I, do, uh, I need. Now, I had a surplus, and that's what I'm drawing off of. However, I will go ahead and look here. See, you can see here that I need... Um, 700 per hour, but I'm only bringing in 673. You can see my backlog is at 63,000, so that's not going to last a whole long time. Um, I have shifted things around a little bit, but not much. Most of my plot, all my plots at this point are, um, well, say all but two plots have all gold foil commons on them, okay? And you can see that they're they're drawing, uh, and most of them have either a 10 or 20% boost on them. They all have common totems on them, like I had talked about in my earlier videos. Um, now, there are a couple of them where I did put some beta cards on to bring up. But my overall problem right now is bringing this grain production up a little bit. And what I believe I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out a common totem and get a rare totem and put it on one of my grain producing uh, plots in this in this region and that'll bump that up high enough so uh, I'm currently at 12 plots that's what I've been at I don't necessarily intend on buying anymore at this point I know that land has kind of come down a little bit in some areas however in the regions I'm at which is a good thing it's still holding value if not increasing in price so it's a good thing and we can talk about that going forward because next on my list in the upcoming months is to get a strategy on what I'm going to do with these plots. Um, after we've we've talked about the 2.0 and what's gone into it and the white paper has just come online. So we need to take another look at that. But we've mostly gone, th gone through most of that information. But I need to process that directly with what that means to me. And I have not done that yet. I think I'm looking pretty good okay as far as having minimal plots enough plots to kind of produce enough food when uh, 2.0 happens for the rest of mine uh, you know I, I i know there's a big discussion about that um, but i still would like to be somewhat independent i know that's not going to fully happen because i'm going to buy things off off the market and everything and i know that's what the game's about i understand that but i would still like to ha be able to produce enough food to um not have to buy every single thing off the market right so okay the next update i will provide is that i have been taking advantage of sps being in kind of a lull lately it has you can see i switched over here to splinter cards but you can see that it has gone up recently but it had been in a lull kind of a valley i took advantage and i've been uh dcaing um and not every day, but every week, I've been buying uh, a portion of SPS. I've been buying a portion of vouchers and a few other things as far as across crypto, you know. Um, but taking advantage of that, we can see that DEC has been holding its own lately, which is a good thing. Uh, all the changes that they put into place um, to try and help that out seem to have worked, you know. Um, we can just cross our fingers and hope it goes forward. We can see that SPS has come up lately, although that more recently, the last day or two, it's kind of taken a little bit of a dip. We can see that vouchers are doing quite well. They've announced a, a few new functionalities for vouchers, so that's helped. And uh, definitely the fact that um, 
Hive has gone up helps as well. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily following Bitcoin, but as we know, the old rule uh, seems to be that when Bitcoin goes up, other crypto seems to go up with it. Um, and it's just the whole mindset, right? It's just that for some reason, the psychology with being a human is that when things are down, you don't necessarily want to buy them. But when they're going up, you get this FOMO and you want to start buying, but you don't necessarily want to buy when it's way up here, right? So I've been forcing myself to buy a little bit of SPS and a little bit of vouchers because, um, and you know, vouchers are often overlooked, but lately they've had a few things built into the game where it increases their functionality. But what I was really buying them for is the fact that when 2.0 goes live, there will be a sufficient need for vouchers. Um, and I will have to go over that again. It's a point that I talked about in one of my previous videos about uh, what the, the vouchers will be used for in 2.0. But suffice it to say that if you're going to be playing the land game in 2.0, you're going to need vouchers. Um, and I think you're going to need a fair amount of them. Okay. So while we're on this page, you can also see that the liquid supply of DEC has just continued to go up. Okay. SPS. Um, I have not bought any packs lately. Uh, I do enjoy opening packs. Who doesn't? But I haven't bought any packs. Uh, Chaos Legion is doing well. It's kind of increasing in price a little bit, although today it took a dip. Um, I will say another thing that I went in a little bit on was to meet the GLX fork um, and match. I brought my stake of GLX above the 10,000 mark. I think it's like 11,500, almost 12,000, something like that, um, to be able to get the match. Um, I did not sell off. And the reason why I, I said this on my live stream the other day, the reason why is that I believe that they start when doing the arcade colony airdrop. It's going to be divided between the airdrop going to SPS stakers and GLX stakers. And if you look at the amount of GLX uh, staked compared to the amount of SPS staked, there's a lot more SPS staked than GLX. And it's been around a lot longer. The game's bigger than Genesis League Sports, etc. Whatever the reason is, uh, I do believe per token staked, you're going to get more arcade colony, uh, the colony token for the airdrop with your GLX. Is this buying advice? No, I'm not going whole hog. Um, I don't have a ton of, mo uh, of money in there. I am increasing my bag a little bit just so I can get more arcade colony airdrop. Of course, I've got my SPS staked as well, so I'm going to be getting airdrops on both sides. Um, but uh, I have been um, looking at that. So with all that said, um, I'm pretty happy about where we are. Um, is everything perfect? No. I mean, with the situation the team's in, and I think they've been putting out a lot of good things um, with the recent ranked battle changes, I'll be looking forward to see how the new, when the changeover to the actual chess system actually happens. It'll be quite interesting to see how that works out. Obviously, I'll kind of miss, uh, you know, uh, opening the chess. Um, it'll be interesting to see if we go towards a situation where you're just basically accruing points to buy more chests, which, you know, what's the point? Um, and it'll be interesting to see if the level of what you make within your daily battles um, account for enough to make, wor make it worth losing the SPS from the daily and uh, biweekly chests, you know, that you would get SPS out of. Really looking forward to Arcade Colony coming online and and uh, the various games they're going to start fielding uh, and the how things work out with that uh, that system. I'm really into that. Not necessarily that I'm into the present games, uh, but I'm into the whole idea of it and where it stands to go from here. So uh, you know, for as much as I can be a um, optimist which i'm uh, not an optimist uh, i'm i'm trying so uh you know so that's where i stand uh what do you think uh what have you been doing uh lately uh, go ahead and drop in the comments so uh, what's the last thing you have put money into in splinterlands and why was it to increase your deck strength was it to bring your land uh increase your uh investment in land did you buy a bunch of uh, nightmare packs uh, to get a, a couple extra SPS every day? Have you been buying gold foils, you know, et cetera, et cetera? We could just go on with that. What have you been doing? Did you think that what I put my money into was wrong? Let me know in the comments. 
the more conversation, uh, the more we can all learn from. Anyway, this has been Bronze Dragon. Hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy, and I will see you on the flip side. Thank you.